crafty friends welcome to today's clean and simple card making video today we're gonna focus on embossing folders and I'm going to show you different ways of using embossing folders so these are most of my embossing folders and if you don't know what an embossing folder is I shall tell you it's basically a plastic usually folder and on one side of the inside there are some raised bits that create a picture, a word, a pattern. And on the other side, there are some coordinating indented bits. So on this one, the pictures are raised and the words are raised, but on this side, they're dipped in. So when it shuts, the raised bits fit in the indentations. And when you put paper in it, close it, apply pressure with a die cutting machine, those raised images and indentations will appear on your card, giving it a lovely dimension. Our first technique today is what I like to call bare embossing. And I call it bare because the paper is bare, there's nothing on it. Just take a regular piece of card, this is smooth white card, pop it in your embossing folder and then run it through your die cutting machine. I'm going to use my Cuttlebug die cutting machine for this. And for my embossing sandwich, I need my thick plate, a cutting plate, my folder and the top cutting plate. Sometimes if I don't feel that enough pressure has been applied, I will pop a bit of extra card in there somewhere just to increase the pressure a bit. And there you go, you've got some lovely teardrop, raindrop impressions on there. But you don't just have to do whole panels. You can do die cuts or panels with apertures cut in them using the bare technique. So I've cut this circle out of smooth white card. I can pop this anywhere I like on there and emboss that. And now I've got a circle with raindrops on it. I do find you maintain the embossing if you die cut the shape first and then emboss it, because if you emboss it and then die cut a shape from it, you do get a bit of squishing from the die cutting process and you don't get the embossing that you might otherwise get. And here's the panel that I cut that circle from and I can emboss this as well. So now I've got a panel with a hole in it and embossing. For technique number two, we're going to do double embossing. And that is where you take the same piece of paper and run it through two embossing folders. So I'm going to start with this paper. It's just smooth white card again. I'm going to put it in this dotty bee butterfly trail type affair. And that's come out really well. And now I'm going to put it in this, I guess it's like snow, isn't it? Falling snow. So some of the original embossing will be a bit squashed because of the second go, but you should be able to see that that line, that dotty line, dashed line is still there. It's not as proud as it was before I ran it through the dotty one, but it's still definitely visible. If you wanted the dashed line to be more prominent and the circles to be less prominent, then run it through the circles first and then the dotty line afterwards. But experiment with different combinations and different orders of more than one folder. On to technique number three now, and that is partial embossing. You can do partial embossing with embossing folders that are designed for that purpose, or you can do it your own way. So let's look at these. I've got a long, thin hexagon embossing folder, and I can put a bit of card in there, get it lined up, hold it still. And now I've got a partially embossed panel. I've just got this strip of hexagons and there's no unwanted extra marks. This one has only got pattern on the bottom right half of the folder. So I can put my card in there and that's given me this lovely wavy pattern down here and lots of empty white space up here. When you're making clean and simple cards, one of the things that a lot of people look for is white space. That is empty space where there's nothing. No inking, no stamping, no drawing, no stenciling, and no embossing. 
So this, because there's a pattern, wouldn't be considered white space, but this would. And white space, really, it just means empty space. I've got another floral one, and I've got a corner one here. And that's given me a nice corner patch. And we've got all this white space here. So I could put my focal point on here and my sentiment and job done. But what if you haven't got the kind of embossing folders that do the partial embossing for you? Well, you can do it yourself. You can take a piece of card and you can put some of it in your embossing folder. It can help just to have the end of the embossing folder hanging out of the bottom of your uh, sandwich that's the word I'm looking for that way this part here the very end won't dig into the card so there we have a partially embossed panel you could put a little border there again focal point sentiment job done depending on the size of your die cutting machine and the plates you may be able to put things in at an angle say like that I probably wouldn't get this through my cuttle bug because I can't get the whole thing on the plates. It would catch going into the machine. So I'd have to use my electronic die cutting machine, which is A4 in size, which is about double the size of that. But you can put your cards in at different angles and emboss in different ways. You can buy things called diffusers, which diffuse the pressure. I think that's why they're called diffusers. But I've got a homemade one here, and it's just a bit of thicker cardboard packaging that I've cut down into a strip. And I'm going to lay it diagonally on top of my embossing folder, just holding it down with a bit of washi. And then I'm going to put my card in between, and that should fit through my cuttle bug. This hasn't worked perfectly in as much as this isn't completely unembossed, but I hope you can see that where the cardboard was, there was a lot more pressure and therefore a more defined, deeper embossed pattern. You could, if you wanted, get a bone folder and squish this down a little bit more just to increase the difference between this bit and this bit. But if you look online, I'm sure you'll be able to find some embossing folder diffusers if that's something that you would be interested in. But the other thing you can do is faux partial embossing. So take something like this, slice the embossing that you want, and then you can glue that onto a card front. And if you take an embossing tool like this, and run it carefully down the edge to bevel it so it doesn't look quite so trimmer or scissor or guillotine cut. You can get quite a convincing partial embossing effect there. On to technique number four, and that is you can use your embossing folders with ink pads and you can apply the ink in different ways. I've got bundled sage distress oxide here and I'm going to use the indented side so the leafy pattern on this is pushed down and I'm just going to swipe my ink pad over this and hopefully it will just go on the background and not on the leaf itself. You could put a bit of paper in and run it through your die cutting machine like that. Or you could apply a mist of water, not too much. And then run that through your machine. Once you close it, make sure you don't move the paper. And there we have a swipey, inky background. I'm going to use bundled sage again, but this time I'm gonna apply it with a brayer. So I'll load this up with ink. And I'm going to run it over the raised picture side. So hopefully I'll mostly get the ink on the raised leaves and not on the background. You can do it on the other side as well, nothing to stop you doing that. And if I do get any on there, I can use a baby wipe or a bit of tissue and carefully remove it as much as I can. I am going to mist that again slightly 
If you find that your paper cracks when you run it through with an embossing folder, misting the paper can actually prevent that. Again, make sure once it's shut, it doesn't move. And there we have green leaves on a white background. And the green leaves are indented rather than raised. This one is white leaves on a green background and the leaves are raised rather than indented. You can also use brushes to ink up your embossing folders. The brushes can get down into the grooves. So that was a bit of chipped sapphire, now for some peacock feathers. You can get those colours to blend. Bit of a mist. And there we have our inked and embossed paper. It's a different look to the one you'd get if you inked the paper first and then ran the inked paper through the embossing folder, which is something you can definitely do. But with this, you tend to get the colours pooling and puddling around the raised texture, which is a really nice effect. You can also add sponge daubers to add colour. I'm going to swipe this sponge sugar because it's very light and I want this to be on the background. I can even use my blend brush to kind of smooth out the swipey lines. Now I've got one lipstick which is a darker colour, darker version of sponge sugar and I'm going to use that sponge, load it up with ink and I can dot it around, put it down into some of the hearts, not all of them necessarily, and blend it out. You can use detail brushes for this kind of thing as well. If you just wanted to go in the hearts more accurately, you could use some very small bent blending, not bending, very small blending brushes. So if I push really hard, I can get some of those parts to pick up the colour so I can make some of those darker and we'll emboss with that and see what we get. If you don't spritz it with water you might get a slightly different effect. I can go in and lift some of the puddles but that's given me quite a nice dreamy effect. I rather like that. You can if you want try and pull a second print or embossed print I suppose so don't clean it don't wash it just put another bit of card in and run it through and see if you get some more ink you'll get a lighter impression right on to technique number five and that is to use your embossing folders with sprays so I'm um, doing the indented sides. These have got little circles on and without getting it all over my hands, she says, I'm going to mist this with this. This is Cosmic Shimmer something spray in Copper Blaze, I think. It didn't come in this bottle, but I managed to destroy the bottle. So I put it in here. I do have a DIY shimmer spray video if you want to know how to make some of your own shimmer sprays rather than buy them. So I'll link to that down below. And there we have a lovely shimmery, coppery circular pattern. Again, because of the texture of the embossing folder, you're getting interesting pooling and puddling around the embossed shapes. quite a bit of visible ink on there. I'm going to spritz it just to give it a bit of extra something to move in and I'm going to run it through with this vellum. See what we get and I've got a textural piece of vellum with a bit of shimmer puddling around the texture. So you don't just have to run paper or card through your embossing folders, you can run vellum as well. Vellum does have a tendency to crack but if you give it a bit of a spritz with water, that can help. For technique number six, I'm going to use pigment powders. So I've got two Indigo Blue Luscious powders, one in 
raspberry jam and one in teal and I've got a hunky dory prism world of colour pearlescent powder in shimmering silver and a star embossing folder I'm just going to give this a gentle mist so that when I apply my pigment powders they don't blow everywhere and just dip a brush in tap it on I'm going to do both sides so we can see what effect we get on both sides I do have a whole series on pigment powders so if you want to know about lots of different techniques that you can use with pigment powders then check that out now I'm going to mist that again just to activate the pigment powders a bit get them liquefied you can use a wet paintbrush just to splodge out some of the lumpy bits and now I will put my paper in the middle and run it through my cuttle bug a note of warning though I think when you're adding lots of water to an embossing folder probably best not to use it with an electronic die cutting machine so it's very wet at the moment because I did use lots of water so this one's got the pigment powder on the raised star side and this one's the pigment powder on the indented star side so very similar but you get a very sort of splotchy but shimmery and interesting effect technique number seven is to use embossing ink so I've got an, a re-inker here. I find this the most efficient way of adding embossing ink to an embossing folder. And I've got my brayer. I'll just cover that in embossing ink and run that again over both sides. Right, that'll do. I'm simply going to put a bit of card in there. And now I've got a panel that's been dry embossed but also has embossing ink on it. I hope you can see on this side the bit where the embossing ink was, so the background, is a little bit darker than the foreground. You can leave it like this, it would look great just like this. It just gives that subtle difference between the foreground and the background. You can also see it on here, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but the indentations are slightly darker. So it's a way of creating a tiny little bit of contrast kind of tone on tone contrast between the background and the foreground and you can just leave it like that and it should stay like that this is probably going to need to go through the washing up it needs a bit of dish soap on it to get all that embossing ink off so I'll put that to one side I'm going to do that again but this time I'm going to treat this with anti-static powder dust that off with a microfiber cloth I'm also going to treat both sides of this card with anti-static powder and now I'm going to ink that up with embossing ink again and my brayer. And we'll emboss this card, the one we've treated with anti-static powder, in exactly the same way. So I've dipped that in gold embossing powder, so now we've got that on there. And I shall heat this with my heat tool. And there we have dry embossing and heat embossing. So this is the side where the flowers are embossed or yes, embossed, they're raised up. So it's the background that got the ink and the embossing powder. And this is the side where the flowers are indented. And that's the side where the flowers themselves got the embossing ink and powder. So you can get two quite different effects, but very beautiful. I do love doing this with gold in particular. We're on to technique number eight now, and that is to use your embossing folder as a stamp. So I'm adding some Distress Oxide. Distress Oxide ink pads are made of a sort of linen felt type affair. And they're quite robust so they can handle being dragged across an embossing folder if you don't do it too roughly ink pads that are made of foam probably wouldn't stand up to this so i've done evergreen bound i'm going to do pine needles i appreciate that the leaves on this embossing folder aren't 
evergreen, they're deciduous. And now I shall add some water just to give the ink something to do, some movement, and I'll put this on some paper and press it down. So I'm using this basically as a stamp. It's gonna give you a mixed media grungy vibe. Not perfect impressions like a rubber stamp. So that's the different effect you get with the two different sides of the embossing folder. And I love that, I think that's gorgeous. And that brings us nicely on to technique number nine, and that is to create a stamp using an embossing folder. This is stamping foam. It's a pretty old school tool. What you do is you heat it with a heat tool and it becomes soft and malleable. And then you press it down into something textural. And when you lift it up, the pattern will be imprinted on there and you can then use it as a stamp as many times as you like and when you want to change the impression you just heat it and it goes flat again you do have to be careful not to overheat it because if you overheat it it will burn and not do what it's supposed to do so get your heat gun nice and hot to start with and keep it moving over the surface until it is ready there's not really any way to tell it's ready unless you stamp it. And if it doesn't stamp brilliantly the first time, you know you need to give it a bit longer with the heat tool. So there we go, we've got the impression. It's not perfect. You might find if you put your embossing folder down and then put, say, a big acrylic block over and apply pressure to the acrylic block, you may get a more even pressure. I'm going to let this cool before I apply any ink. I do find this works really well with dye inks like Catherine Pooler inks. So the impression is not very deep. So you do get some ink in the indentations. I'm just pressing it down gently and giving it a few seconds for the ink to transfer. And now I've got another kind of grungy distress stamped impression which would make a great background with a dye based water based ink you can literally just wipe it off you could run it under the tap you can use a baby wipe or a wet cloth and then you just heat it to get rid of that and i always give it another wipe afterwards because it will get any ink that was down in the dips As well as using stamping foam to create stamps from your embossing folders, you can use Play-Doh. I got this idea from Shauna at Created and Made Studio. I don't have any Play-Doh to hand, and if this doesn't work, I will go out and buy some. But I'm going to experiment with blue tack and see if that works. So I've got some blue tack here that I've made nice and warm and malleable. And I'm going to press that down into my embossing folder. So you just do exactly the same thing if you're using Play-Doh. Make sure I get a good impression. Ink it up. And then I think I'll leave it like that rather than trying to move it. I'm going to press some paper down on top. And there you have a stamped image from your embossing folder using Play-Doh. No, blue tack. You can wipe that off and do another one. I think Play-Doh is probably easier because it is easier to squish. This is quite hard, but it's good workout for your hand. And I don't know what the effect of using, say, Play-Doh or blue tack is going to be on the ink on your ink pads. So use at your own risk. But it's definitely a really good way of creating your own stamps. For technique number 10, we're going to try something with embossing powder again. It may or may not work. This may or may not make it into the video. I've got some glycerin in a nail polish pot here and I'm going to paint a circle. You can paint whatever you like. And I'm going to give this lots of embossing powder. 
going to make a pile of it right in the middle maybe even more we shall, we shall see what we need i've got my embossing folder at the ready and i'm going to heat this until it's all melted from behind So that all melted from behind and then I kept it warm by blowing it from the top. The reason you melt it from behind to start with or underneath is that you don't want to blow that powder off across your classroom, classroom, craft room. And then I pressed my embossing folder down into it and I'm just leaving it for a little bit so that the embossing powder starts to cool and now that it's cooled, I'm going to carefully remove the folder. Some of it's stuck now. I'm going to heat this again from behind, but gently so as hopefully not to warp my embossing folder. I just want to loosen that embossing powder a bit. It wasn't 100% successful. I think it's a timing issue. You want to give the embossing powder enough time to solidify around the pattern, but not too much time so the embossing powder stays stuck. But it's definitely something I'm going to experiment with further. Right, we're at technique number 11 now, and that is to use stamps with your embossing folder. So I'm going to ink up this rubber butterfly stamp with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a solvent-based pigment ink pad. It's quite juicy and that means the ink should transfer well onto my embossing folder. I'm going to stamp it onto the bit which is going to be the background. This has got some splotches on it and I don't want the stamping on the splotches, I want it around the splotches. So I'll just stamp that there. Being careful not to jiggle it, but uh, give it a few seconds for the ink to transfer. Lift it straight up and I'll pop that in there, making sure not to move it. And now I've got embossing and a stamped image, but the stamping is not on the raised areas. I think that's quite a fun effect. It looks like the butterfly is behind these blobs. Depending on what ink you're using, you might need to use isopropyl alcohol or something to clean that off. Technique number 12 is to use your embossing folders with tissue paper. So this is just white tissue. I'm going to fold it once, twice, three times. I'm going to spritz my folder on both sides, lay my tissue onto the pattern, spritz, 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 spritz. Take a domed foam blender and press that down into the dips in the embossing folder. You'll know it's wet enough and pressed enough when you can kind of see through it. And the reason I'm wetting it is because when it dries, it will hold its shape and it won't rip when it goes through the die cutting machine. Again, this is a technique you probably don't want to try with an electronic die cutting machine because there's so much water involved. So that looks good to me. I can kind of see the purple through there. Everything seems to be pressed down. When I open it up, you'll see that the tissue has got the embossed pattern on it. You can leave it like that to dry, or if you're careful, you can lift it out with a palette knife or some kind of flat thing. And you can set that aside to dry. Did I say you can do this with tissue paper, toilet paper, kitchen paper, any kind of thin paper? Here are a couple I made last night and they have dried, not quite fully, it does take a while for the water to fully evaporate, although you could leave it say on a radiator or in the sunshine depending on what season you're in. And once it's dry you can kind of tear it, you can rough up the edges with an edge distresser or use your finger or a craft knife or a pair of scissors. And that I think would make a really nice fun base to a focal point.
foundational spot. And you could gild that, you could paint on it, you could do whatever you like with it. So use embossing folders with tissue paper. And lastly, on to our final technique, and that is to use embossing folders with gel plates. And again, this is a sort of stamping, I think. So I put broken china, distress oxide on there, brayed it out so it's a nice thin layer and it's not beading up at all. Might pop a little band of chipped sapphire in the middle. Just spread that out a bit, just for some variation and interest. And then I'll take this embossing folder, wibbly wobbly grid, and press one side down without shifting it once it's down. Try and get it all in contact, but it doesn't really matter because it's a, another kind of grungy look, this. I'm going to lift that up. That's now got ink on it. And now I'm going to pop a bit of card on there. Pop a bit of non-stick paper over the top. You can use any paper for this, doesn't have to be deli paper. Give it a good press down. You can even roll her over it with your brayer. And now you've got that crisscross wibbly wobbly grid stamped onto your gel print. I do have a whole series on using gel plates in clean and simple card making, so check that out if you're interested in more gel plate ideas and information. Right, so those are our techniques, but I just wanted to note that you don't just have to use plain old white card in your embossing folders. You can use other materials too, and I've done some here. This one I did with a bit of regular old kitchen aluminium foil. I simply stuck some to a piece of card and then ran it through with this embossing folder and I've got this lovely leafy embossed foil. In a similar vein, I used some ready foiled cardstocks. This is just plain gold foiled cardstock and ran it through with this embossing folder. So now that's embossed. You saw me use vellum earlier, so vellum is another thing you can emboss. This is a piece of acetate, the kind you'd use to make a shaper window, and I ran that through with this one, and now I've got a really a lovely embossed pattern, and it hasn't cracked or warped. This one. I'm very proud of. This is a laminator pouch that I filled with glitter and then laminated so the glitter is trapped within the plastic and then I ran it through with this wintry one. I'll take close-ups of all these because you might not be able to see the embossing but this has got the snowflakes, the stars and the big snowflakes on it. You can add washi tape to your card before you emboss it, which is what I did with this one. So the washi tape has got the embossed pattern on. This one, I stamped the butterfly on my card before embossing it. So I've got a full butterfly image there and the embossing goes over the image as well. You can use mixed media backgrounds. This was one I made in my 16 ways with shimmer spray video and I thought it would make a great autumnal background. So I put some falling leaves on it. This one is just a piece of black card, but I covered this part with clear packing tape and then embossed it. So now I've got this glossy strip with the embossing on. And this one, you can't see it very well, but it's a spotty scrapbook paper. So you can use scrapbook paper and I embossed it with this cross pattern. So it's dots and crosses.
And just as I did with the washi tape, you could put strips of ribbon on here, glue them down or stick them down somehow, and then run that through your embossing folder. I do have a 10 ways with, is it 10 ways? It might be 10 ways. Use it or lose it ribbon video. So check that out if you want to see embossing on ribbon. And you can also glue fabric to card and run that through with an embossing folder. So that brings us to the end of this video. I think what I'm going to do, having done all this, is another video looking at making cards with embossing folders. So maybe 10 cards with embossed panels and use some of the ones I've created today. Treat them in different ways to bring out the embossing. And I think I might also do a 10 things you can use to emboss if you haven't got or you want to augment your embossing folder collection. Right, I think we'll leave it there for today. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed any new techniques, new to you techniques, or if there are any you want to try, resurrect things you've done in the past and forgotten about. And if you want to see more from me, do subscribe, ring the notification bell and see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.